Uh, we need to, to understand that we continue to be data dependent. Uh, even uh, after the meeting of September, which was a very important meeting, because we added that statement that says uh, that with this level of interest rates, we believe we made a substantial effort to, to reduce inflation to, the, to our target. It will converge to our target in the medium term. And that's, and that's what we want uh, for inflation to, to be. So we, we will continue to be data dependent. So but based on what you just said, you feel personally that you are done for the time being in terms of increasing interest rates. What that statement says is, is that uh, bear additional shocks that uh, we don't see coming, of course, uh, we will be uh, done. That's, that's, what, that's my interpretation uh, of the decision in September. Right. When it comes to additional shocks, though, over the weekend, of course, further instability in the Middle East, that could have an implication on oil prices. How do you see this situation? Do you think that higher oil prices could actually be that additional shock that will change your mind regarding rates at this stage? We already have a, a, a little bit of an increase in oil um, prices in the horizon. Future markets uh, were already a little bit higher than at the beginning of the summer. That uh, implied a very minor revision in our inflation trajectory. Uh, I, I don't see that really materializing right now at a level that will imply a, a change uh, in this. So, mm -hmm. but, but of course, again, we need to monitor very, very careful because the, the economy uh, and our forecast for the economy has been revised downwards quite substantially. Uh, also mm -hmm. in September, uh, we see uh, monetary policy transmission, uh, I mean, much mm -hmm. stronger today than we expected five, six months ago. And that's, that's the, the role of monetary policy, to manage expectations and to uh, put the inflation rate in the trajectory Governor, consistent with the goal. You're considered to be one of the more dovish members of the mm -hmm. committee. Uh, you have said in the past that there is a risk of over-tightening. Where do you see those risks materializing? Which part of the economy are you looking at and saying there are signs that we may be doing too much and the economy can't withstand it? Let me tell you why uh, I think uh, the risks of over-tightening uh, uh, are risks that we must be concerned with and we must be monitoring mm -hmm. those. Because uh, economic policy and monetary policy in itself uh, is stabilizing in nature. So we, we should not uh, pursue a, a policy uh, that uh, generate uh, instability. So uh, over tightening will be always uh, undesirable because after an overshooting, that will be an undershooting, mm -hmm. and, and that's not stabilization policy. So we are here to stabilize <laughs> prices, the financial markets. Uh, for Europe, that is uh, very, very important. Mm. So um, if we really, uh, in our regular job, see that we are doing enough, we need to really take that uh, into account uh, to avoid mm. these uh, non-stabilization paths. Uh, for, for I'm going to go economy. back to an analogy that was recently used by another central banker. If you look at where rates are today, would you say we're more at a table mountain level or a Matterhorn level? And the reason I ask is, <laughs> you know, are rates going to stay stable from here onwards or are we already at the point where they're quite high and therefore the ECB may have to bring forward the timing of rate cuts because of that risk of over tightening. I have to go back to my initial sentence. We will continue to be data dependent through mm. all that process. Uh, and if we feel that uh, we need to adjust uh, rates either up or down, we will do it. Make uh, no mistake about it. Being a more dovish or more hawkish perspective, uh, we are very much concerned about uh, price stability. This is our primary mandate, so we will do that. Of course, to achieve price stability in a, an orderly manner, uh, we need to provide this uh, idea of stabilization to, mm -hmm. to all variables that uh, are Governor, our, our, our also, concern. I'm sorry, but there's also quite a lot of question marks at this stage from uh, uh, market players regarding your PEP reinvestments mm -hmm. and whether the ECB is likely to bring that forward, cutting those reinvesting, uh, reinvestments, that is. Are you prepared to do that or do you think it's too early to discuss that, this in specific? We are 
primarily concerned with inflation. That's, uh, that's absolutely clear. So if we start discussing uh, these um, uh, other uh, instruments, because they are in our tool uh, kit and we need to, of course, uh, adjust them uh, over time, it, that, that will be a very good news for all of us because it means that uh, we think inflation is in a, uh, in a good path uh, towards, towards our aim. And, and so at that point, but to me, uh, honestly, it will be only at that point we, 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 we should and we need to start uh, debating uh, the other instruments and adjusting them uh, so, so that uh, we create uh, space uh, in our balance sheet. We need to reduce the balance sheet, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, and uh, by how much, it will depend on our evaluation on the success that we are having uh, in terms of inflation. Because prior to these, in 2008 and 2011, the ECB had two very bad experiences with um, these uh, hiking processes that we had to revert because of financial instability. We don't have that in the euro area. We are very happy uh, about that. We created TPI. Uh, the institutions in, in the euro area are much stronger today than they were before. There is no question about the future of the euro uh, at this stage, and this is probably the best ever new that we will, would like to have. So we will not create instability on that front uh, either. I guess just as a follow-up to Sylvia's question, I mean, one of the questions that we ask ourselves as market participants is, what is more important to the ECB when looking at these spread levels? Is it, is it the spread be between, say, BTP yields and, and Germany, or the absolute yield level? Because if you think of it in absolute yield terms, we're at levels not seen for, for a decade now. That is also very concerning as well. So at some point, you have to think that if you do start unwinding that pet portfolio, it could be destabilizing for the more vulnerable periphery countries. We don't see signs of that destabilization. And spreads uh, are obviously more important than the level of the hills. Uh, we uh, have been hiking, but the level of the interest rate is, I mean, it's, uh, we, we experienced already higher rates than, than today. We had a very long period of very low or even negative real interest rates. Uh, the change in the real interest rate will continue even uh, after we pause because inflation is coming down. So uh, the, the, all, all these aspects must be uh, taken uh, into account. Uh, and one thing that I can assure you is that being more dovish or more hawkish, mm -hmm. we are really concerned about uh, getting our job done mm -hmm. with financial stability in yeah. the Eurozone. You mentioned the anti-fragmentation tool there, and with that in mind, I have to ask you about Italy, because we've seen uh, uh, the yield moving higher in recent weeks. There's a concern in the market about the latest uh, uh, budget that Italy put forward. Are you also worried about the dynamics in the Italian economy, and do you think that we're at the level where you need to start discussing using the anti-fragmentation tool? Well, my professional past tells me that fiscal is of utmost importance for Europe, and we must pay attention to that. I think Europe so far, uh, again, uh, has provided a very, uh, uh, I mean, it has provided confidence to the market with that respect, uh, because uh, if you go, if you look at the deficits uh, of the euro area as a whole or, or specific countries, you don't see big divergences or you don't see uh, a problem in the making. But uh, of course, uh, this uh, this is a everyday job. So uh, the reaction of the markets, uh, as you put it, uh, was exactly related with the budget uh, of Italy. I think it's up to the Italian authorities to, to sort that out. Uh, they cannot um, take that to, the, to a level that it is. it becomes a monetary issue. It will not, and I'm sure that the Italian authorities also, as they did in the past, uh, will, will take that uh, seriously and will fix that. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.